stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, those on the stage, you may take your mask off if you're so inclined with our social distancing. Um, we want to welcome you all to the May 2021 regular school board meeting. Um, please let the record show that um, Angie Jacobs is not present tonight. She regrets she was not able to, to be here with us, um, but the uh, other board members are present. Um, our first item will be visitor comments, and so. But, uh, I believe I believe we had one visitor comment. Okay. Please give your name and uh, tell us what you would like for us to know. Um, I'm Hannah Lane, and I'm a softball player and junior here. And uh, my main thing is, like, there have been very few changes to the softball fields, like, compared to other places. I just want, like, there to be more um, upgrades there. And, uh, um, like, some facilities get, like, yearly updates, but within, like, 10 years, I haven't seen much changes. And I, also, I talked to the teammates of everybody of the team and they wanted like dugouts, new dugouts. That would be nice. Okay. I'm sorry, if, since you're social distance, can you take off your mask? I can't understand right. very well. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, and so you're discussing um, upgrades to the softball? softball? Yeah, and I talked to the athletic director. He said there was no um, anything in plan. don't know that we have anything planned. Uh, what kind of uh, upgrades are you think would be appropriate? Um, like more of a, maybe a new dugout or a batting cage, because our batting cage is like, if you hit it a certain way, just the ball keeps going. And uh, okay. if it's really windy, they have to hold it back because it's not secured. And the dugout's like, um, they just haven't been updated in, in like, I think 35 years, what John Chance said. Okay. So I just think it would be nice to be more updates. Okay. Right. That's about it. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll look into that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Our next item is the consent agenda. So we have the approval of minutes for April 19th, 2021 regular board meeting and the April 28th, 2021 executive meeting. We have the treasurer's report for April of 2020. Uh, Mr. Dernal, the claims please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have gross wages on April 9th, 2021 for 635,000. $84.38 for gross wages mini payroll on April 22nd, 2021 for $334.34. Gross wages on April 23rd, 2021 for $637,954.10. We have vouchers and pre -pay claims prepaid at 41 to 430 of 21, $1,111,116.57. We have regular vouchers for claims on 5-17-2021 for $237, and, I'm sorry, $237,832.17. For sale claims and vouchers, uh, 5-18 for $995.09 for a grand total of $2,623,316.65. Thank you, Mr. Colonel. Um, we have a number of donations. Uh, Tri Kappa has been long been a, a big supporter of RBB, and uh, they have a hundred dollars uh, to the EHS STEAM uh, program, a hundred dollars to the uh, EHS Arts uh, Award Spring Show, um, seventy-five dollars for the EPS Art Program, a hundred dollars to the EPS STEAM program, seventy-five dollars for the EIS Art Program 
and $100 for the EIS STEAM program, $100 to the junior high STEAM program, $75 to the junior high art awards spring show, a hundred dollars for the student assistance fund. Uh, so it's considerable donations from Tritac Kappa. We also have two hundred fifty dollars from Kuntz Construction Inc. for student uh, athletes in the twelve sports program. There was also a donation of hand sanitizer from Sands Club to the junior high. And there is also an anonymous donor who is covering the cost to send Mrs. Bruce's virtual students to Bradford Woods. Um, so we appreciate all those donations. We also have personnel, uh, resignations, retirements, non-renewals, leaves and terminations, A through I, and appointments and transfers, A through E. Do we have a motion on the consent agenda? I move approval. A second. Moved and seconded. Any questions, comments on the consent agenda? Just uh, one personnel item that I can't overlook. Um, Jerry Bland uh, oh. is going to yeah. be leaving us, and uh, I hate to see him go. I had such a, I really enjoyed working with him over the years, and uh, uh, but uh, it, it's such integrity in a man and uh, the fact that he's going across the county line doesn't make me real happy but uh, I, I know that he does like a challenge and maybe he will find one so. yeah I would like to add to that too about Jerry Bland uh, I'm, I'm going to miss him because he has a great name <laughs> and uh, we've had some interested meetings uh, we had a meeting uh, with uh, Jerry Pittsford Jerry Bland and myself one meeting and, and it, it did get a little confusing, but but and, then, uh, and plus Jerry, right? yeah. But uh, Jerry Bland, he's just a solid, solid leader, yeah. and uh, I, he's somebody you can always count on. So we're going to miss him, wish him good luck, and uh, even though he's going to be down the road, uh, hopefully we'll get to see him from uh, some, from time to time. And and so um, I just wanted to add my little bit to support of Jerry. I feel the same way about Jerry. I also want to commend uh, Sam's Club uh, for their donation for hand sanitizer. Uh, they took care of all the law enforcement agencies around McKinley, too. We appreciate that very much. I just want to thank, thank Mr. Bland, too. I, I, I was just reading a text I sent him last week. Congrats on your role at OV. I hate to lose you, but understand your desire for a new challenge. I talked to Mr. Boatinghouse today. He's very excited about you joining his team there. So uh, I know he's going to be missed, but he's going to be still contributing, doing well for the kids in the area. So appreciate it. I'm not sure what's going to happen with the bland stamp now. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah, the um, white stamp doesn't have the same yeah. brand. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything further? Hear nothing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries for up. Um, now we'll have the business manager's report. Mr. Irwin. So you've got up there, you've got the cash flows, and then I also have a piece up there from Stiefel that I'll talk about later as well, just to fill you in on some the resale of the bonds. So starting with the education fund, um, again, keeping it brief, the education fund is staying right where we expected it to be. Uh, again, we still project to be about even on year-end balance. If you look at the beginning year balance and where we project to be with year-end balance, we've used the most up-to-date information that we've gotten through the legislature um, and the DOE to make projections as accurate as possible, um, as accurate as possible as they can be at this time. And so we will continue to update those as we, as we normally do. Um, debt service, there's nothing much to note in this fund for April. We had no receipts and we paid a small trustee fee in, um, during the month and that was expected. Operations fund uh, came in about where we expected as well. A couple things of note from the month of April on the operations fund is we paid for the two buses that we ordered earlier in the year. You pay for those on arrival, which is why those claims are a little higher. If you remember, those are about $105,000 a piece. Um, our utility bills this past month were much higher. If you remember a lot of the bizarre weather that had happened over the course of the country, they had that freeze off in Texas, which caused our gas prices to spike and our bills were a lot higher in utilities this month. Uh, because of those things and so it kind of amped that up a little bit but it still was pretty close to what we had expected to be in claims but it was higher 
Um, those two factors, you know, played into that. We also updated the cash flows to just to show the actuals on the 2021 circuit breaker. Um, we got that report this past week. Um, those came in a little bit higher than we had on our budget estimate when we went through the budget process. But with all of that said, we, we still feel like we're going to end in a very comfortable range at the end of the year with where we like to be in the operations fund. So um, that's definitely a positive thing to keep in note and, and to continue to work on that. I've already started working on the 2022 projections, cash flows for all three of the major funds and continuing to work on those now that the legislature piece is, is there. Also getting more information from policy analytics as we work on that tax base study that's helping me as well. So hopefully that will be something that's fruitful to the corporation as we continue to plan forward thinking. So I want you to turn to that piece. I gave you the piece of paper from Stiefel that talked about the bond savings. Back in March, we brought to you uh, the resolution to be able to go out to uh, sale for the resale of the 2019 bonds. Um, long story short, the, the school realized over $1 million worth of debt uh, payments, future debt payments on interest rates. So the interest rate went down by a little over a percent and a half over the course of the life of the loan. And again, that's a little over $1,032,000 in savings on future interest, uh, which is pretty remarkable. Um, the pieces that played a, played a part in that are obviously market conditions improved from the March meeting to the time of sale. Um, the other thing that played a huge factor in it was that the school's credit rating when we went through the rating process with S&P went from a triple B plus to an A minus with a positive outlook as well. Um, and speaking with Stiefel, I think one of the things that just uh, to give a, a shout out to the board and, and to Dr. Sanders is that very few people in this time were getting rating upgrades during resale of bonds or just sale of bonds in general. Um, and not only did we get the rating increase, but we also got the positive outlook which is something that's very positive moving forward, which means that in the future, if there's future sale of bonds at that time, there's a very likelihood that if things continue to trend in the way that they're trending, that we'll continue to see another rating improvement. So wanted to give you an update on that piece as well. You guys have any questions? But thank you thank for you. all the yes, thank hard you. work and yes. doing with that as well. It, um, the financial management that's been going on here uh, in the last several years has really, really improved our situation, and that improves the, our rating. And and uh, so we appreciate the savings and the, that that comes Absolutely. from that, plus the hard work that you put in there. And thank you to Steve and, and Bose McKinney as well that helped us through the process. Ferguson Law, just everybody involved with that process. It was very smooth, and obviously went very well for the school corporation. So, and I, I just want to echo that. I mean, it's that's. <clears throat> that's not a fifty thousand dollars say it's, it's over a million dollars and that's just from being proactive i appreciate what you and steve have done and, and dr sanders and the rest of the board on managing things better so kudos thank you thank you thank you um next we have consideration to approve the agreement with the sharp facts uh, core facts um system and dr sanders Yes, uh, Rick Rotten, our director of Techno technology, not only does a good job with making sure that our technology is run, running smoothly, but he is uh, has a habit, a very good habit, of trying to save the school corporation money. And uh, his most recent effort is with uh, faxing. Uh, we can uh, utilize uh, some of our same equipment but remove our analog phone lines. And the analog, analog phone lines cost the corporation uh, $3,500 a year in uh, uh, fees. And by moving forward with the proposed SHARP agreement, we would save an estimated $1,973 in the first year with additional savings in future years. And we might say, you know, uh, $1,973, maybe that's not, uh, a lot but it is and it all adds up and that's why we end up in a, a better financial situation and we're able to achieve a, a better credit rating because those little things turn into big things uh, Rick's here tonight and I'll let him see if he wants to add anything uh, to what I just said uh, thank you uh, you've covered it uh, very well for me so um, yeah the savings that we're seeing uh, projected um, will be somewhere in five years about 21000 so that little $1,900 adds up over a course of time. 
And the number we're using right now is we have seven fax machines, so that's what these are based on. But we will be adding another fax machine uh, or fax service uh, once the uh, new EECC uh, building is finished and they receive their equipment. So we will have a slight change in our number, but it's, it's going for the positive side for them. And again, um, some people ask me, why do we keep fax machines around? Unfortunately, there's still a need for it by the medical industry. So that's how we receive our student information out there going to be in or out of school from the doctor's notes and things that they just haven't fully, fully uh, felt comfortable doing with HIPAA and over an email yet. So that's why the fax machines still are around, but our numbers of uh, faxes that are coming in are greatly reducing over time as more and more people become more comfortable with uh, the email and scan feature. The other thing that will have a cost savings is that um, not all the faxes are going to print immediately, so they're going to be stored and then released. So someone can go up to the machine and release it after they see what it is. And if it's just a spam e uh, fax, they can delete it. So we're also going to see some reductions, hopefully, in our uh, fax or, or excuse me, copiers on paper and ink and so uh, other access to the copiers. So. Hopefully we'll have more savings as we continue, but this is a small minor one, but it's uh, enough to be uh, moving forward on. And then again, I request your approval and if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. We appreciate the work that you have been doing to, to, to help make us more economical and more efficient. Um, and it's, it, it, it is really helping. It, you know, this is just one of many things that you've you've come to us with, so we really appreciate that hard work and keeping an eye out on, you know, stuff that <laughs> we wouldn't think about, <laughs> or at least I would, yeah. but it's, it's there, and so we appreciate you thinking about it. Thank you. Okay. So do we have a motion? I'll move approval. I'll second. Move and second. Any further questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank here. you. Thank you. Okay, next we have a consideration to approve the resolutions to transfer funds to Rainy Day. Mr. Irwin. Yeah, so I presented you guys with the resolution for that transfer to Rainy Day uh, for an up to amount of $500,000 from the operations fund to the Rainy Day fund. Uh, a little over two years ago, the board and the administration kind of set forth the goal to continue to restore balances and reserves, one of those being in the Rainy Day fund. Um, again, there for those times when unexpected bills, projects, revenue shortfalls come in place, that's, that's there obviously and, uh, to safeguard the school corporation from financial troubles. Um, the resolution says up to for a reason. It allows me over the course of the year to evaluate cash flows to see whether or not we end up needing to do, end up being able to do 500000 or whether or not we need to do less. Um, and so I've kind of put that into the cash flows to show you what that would look like presently with the current cash flows. But obviously we still need to get to our June uh, tax disbursement settlement, see how those things come in. And obviously as things continue to flow the next couple months, um, and we'll go through that process and decide. Um, but with that, I ask for your guys' approval of this resolution. I move to approve the resolution to transfer the funds. I'll, I'll second. Second. Uh, any questions or comments? When is this? When is that dollar amount determined, and when the transfer will occur? Of when it will occur? When, yeah. When will that be? At the resolution allows for it to happen anytime during open. this calendar year. So the resolution <clears throat> would be good through 2021. Uh, so it okay. allows me to do it anytime during the course of this year. I plan to do some during June. Again, once we've seen that June disbursement of taxes come in, we'll decide kind of what we feel comfortable with at that point based on what the cash flows and the projections are showing. I don't want to move it and then all of a sudden realize later on in the year maybe we shouldn't have moved that much and then we would have to go through a process to, to move it back out. And so um, we'll, we'll kind of determine that as we kind of see where we're at in June. Okay, and then that, this will be in addition to our current. Yeah, so right now, yeah, it'll Perfect. be addition to what we already have. Perfect. Thank you. And would there just be one movement? I mean, could you <clears throat> say move two hundred thousand in June and then decide you want to do another two hundred thousand later? In the yeah, you absolutely okay. could do okay. that. And that was the reason I worded it up to amount. If I would have worded okay. it specifically, then it would have had to have been that amount. 
Um, and so I put that wording on there to give us that flexibility so that we can make some decisions in the interim. Okay. Anything further? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have consideration to approve a memorandum of understanding with the town of Ellisville to construct a sidewalk trail. Dr. Sanders. Yes, uh, we have been working with uh, the town of Ellisville uh, to uh, construct a trail uh, which will come up from 46 up Poplar Drive and then turn on a school drive to Edgewood Drive and on up to the high school. Uh, the town of Ellettsville has committed to providing the labor, saving us a lot of money. Uh, the uh, school corporation will pay for the materials, and we have to take care of any easements. Uh, there are uh, easements that are with the town of Ellettsville, and then there's a little piece of that path that is actually going to require an easement from the state. And so we are, we have confidence of being able to get the easement with the town of Ellisville and we're, we're, we will be working with the state. Uh, that'll be um, just a little more to that, that easement, but uh, Christine Bartlett with Ferguson Law is working on that uh, right now. Um, so uh, as a courtesy though, uh, even though there aren't any easements that are going along the, the property of a homeowner, we are uh, in, already in the process of contacting, uh, we're developing a list of names right now is where we are, of contacting the residents uh, along the path. And uh, uh, Mike Farmer with the town of Ellisville is, is working with us uh, so that we know exactly who to contact. Um, we will pay for the uh, materials out of a combination of uh, our general obligation bond and also grant money. Uh, Vicki Coffey, our Director of Nutrition Services, wrote a grant that's called Tactical Urbanism Grant. It's through the Indiana Department of Health and it was for $10,000. And the purpose of it is to provide a place for a physical activity in a community. So I think a trail definitely meets that criteria. Uh, we've met several times with Mike Farmer in the Ellisville uh, uh, Street Department, uh, and they went over the costs of the, the project and, and gave us an estimated cost of 28,000 and uh, for the materials. And so we will uh, be taking that out, like I said, out of the combination of the general obligation bond and the, the uh, uh, tactical urbanism grant that Vicki Coffey wrote. Um, it's just really a pleasure to work with the town of Ellettsville. Uh, we uh, uh, met around a table and they asked such great questions and you could just tell in their faces and their voices that they really care and they want to do something nice, not only for RBB, but uh, the entire community. Uh, so uh, we, uh, uh, have already had the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding, approved by the town of Ellisville. That happened on May 10th, and so tonight we're asking uh, the school board to uh, approve the same MOU. We have a motion. I make a motion to accept. I'll second. Maybe a second. Just a couple of comments. Just one okay. comment here. This is a vision. I uh, should call it of Mike Farmer. You know, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't like to be patted on the back very much, but uh, he has a vision uh, to move these trails all over Ellisville, which is, uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, when people move into a city, of course they look at schools, then parks and recreation and trails are right right there, behind, right behind the schools. So, you know, this is this goes right along with our, all of our updating that we've been doing here the last several years with our system, and, you know, this should be a real great step uh, as far as completing that, that, that vision he has. So we're real excited about it. There are a large number of residents who like to walk around oh, the, right. the school. This will make it much safer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Some board and, members. And it's really, really <laughs> been, on there and off you go. <laughs> beneficial to the, to the to the town, to the to the school, and uh, so I 
do appreciate the good relationship that we have mm -hmm. with the town of Ellettsville. It just seems to get better and better all the time. I just a uh, question about uh, the route there along Edgewood Drive. I presume we aren't going to have to take out any of those trees, are we? No. Good. Good. No. We're going to meander in and out of those. So. Well, that'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Love the trees. Yeah, I, I did have one question on the, the nature. And thanks, thanks, Dr. Sanders, for reaching out and connecting with the homeowners along in there, because that's, that's important that, to open up that communication. But as far as the path itself, is it going to be concrete, blacktop? It'll be uh, blacktop. Okay. All right. Perfect. And then with the end, the end goal is to connect the high school to the junior high through another path, correct? Right. So the, the next phase will be working on a, a path, a trail, a uh, sidewalk, whatever you want to call it, between the high school and the junior high. And, uh, and make that connection there. Uh, we do have a lot of students who, who walk between the junior high and high school, and we would like to provide a safe place for them to do that. We are in the process of looking for additional grants uh, to fund that next phase. Okay. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Wonderful. Okay, the next is consideration to award a bid for the Innovative Learning Center, Dr. Sanders. I am so excited for this agenda item. Uh, you know, we've been working on Ready Schools for quite some time, and, and now we're starting to, to really uh, make some progress, and uh, you should uh, hopefully in June, uh, I would like to be able to have the board meeting up at the new multi-purpose room. Uh, so we can show you the design labs up there, some great things that are happening. And we want to have that same thing uh, here at the high school, and that'll happen in our Innovative Learning Center. On April 27th, we uh, had a bid opening, and uh, we received uh, bids from four different companies. Uh, and the lowest bid was uh, TearStep Company Incorporated. Uh, and in the board packet, you're able to see the bids from all four companies. Uh, George Link is here tonight, and I've asked him to come forward and uh, share some more information uh, for you and also maybe to answer some of your questions. Okay, as Dr. Sanders said, on uh, April 27th, we received an open bids. Um, tonight, we are recommending that the project be awarded for the base bid to Tier Step Company Incorporated for $769,000. And this is gonna be a little bit of a different twist, that alternate number two actually gets awarded to Building Associates for $264,700. The reason for that is alternate number two has to do with going into the old administration building and renovating that for the, uh, the edge there. Uh, time sensitive, you know, we have to be in the new administration building before we can go in and tear uh, into the old one. The Innovative Learning Center will probably be done before the new admin building is complete. So the original plan was I was gonna issue it as a PR to building associates to do that work. They bid on it and it just so happens that their alternate price was the lowest of the four. So I said, well, we could just do that as a change order as long as they were in agreement and they were in agreement to that and that way it ties that work with their their timeline on it uh, the concern with several of the contractors was is that they'd have to pull off and come back at a later date to finish that portion of the work if it was accepted so now we don't have that issue do we have a motion i move approval a second uh, questions comments they answered one of them. Sound uh, good. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was wondering how that was going to work with the chiller. I'm uh, very excited for an uh -huh. learning too, yeah. uh, Substantial just... completion date for it is uh, at the end of October. Um, it could run a little bit longer, just depending on some delivery times. Once we get into those, we're seeing some long lead items. And in all honesty, at some point in time, we're probably going to be looking at 
what we're going to utilize for the roof structure of the new admin and the bus maintenance because uh, bar joists right now are, are forever away. I and mean, we're seeing lead times for projects that we're bidding now that are telling us first quarter of next year before we can get them. So we're looking at alternative uh, roof structures that we could utilize that are more readily available on that. So as far as, far as the, the parking, George, the, is that going to be taken care of first, expanding the parking lot? Expanding the parking lot for, you're talking about for the admin building? Correct. Uh, the bus maintenance lot is supposed to be finished this summer. That'll be done before the start of school. Be, okay. Yeah. We've got a plan. They're moving the buses out. June 2nd, bringing temporary fencing in to create the temporary lot, the secured lot for them on the 3rd, and then they, they've already cut out uh, the, the expanded portion of it. They're just waiting for the rest of the lot to be cleared, but it'll be done and turned back over. It won't, you know, it won't be 100% complete because there's some areas we can't close up completely finally until the admin building's done, but the lot will be ready to receive the buses. Now, once it's all completed, that'll take out the need to use that side parking lot for buses? Yes. Sure. Complete, completely? Yes. Okay. And there should be room there for now for the, the band uh, trailers and things like that to go in that lot as well. Yeah, perfect. Okay. It'd be nice to get those in the fence lot. Correct. Sure. And then there's, there will be room for growth. If that's why I and said so for now so we there's are, room we for those in there. The Eventually they'll get pushed back out again. That's okay. Yeah, just concern like continued growth if some of the bus routes come back to the corporation, is there room in there? I think we've got space, and don't quote me on this because it's been a while since I've counted up. It's either 42 or 44 bus spaces in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything further? Good. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Zero. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you. Appreciate it. Um, our next item is consideration to approve uh, HVAC uh, alternative uh, for the EPS EIS chiller. Mr. Irwin. Yeah, so during the bid process for the HVAC work uh, through the 2019 bond, uh, one of the alternate projects that was bid out by the uh, winning bidder of commercial services was for the um, EPS EIS chiller. Uh, there's two of those on site there, um, and this is uh, for us to pick up and replace one of those at the, this time. Um, I provided you in the board packet that the quote, again, they requoted that. And again, the expected total of this is $194,500, and it'll get paid from the bond proceeds. Um, so with that, I recommend your approval. Okay. I move approval. I second. second. <laughs> Questions, comments? It's hard Appreciate to believe that those things are coming up on you 20, 20 some years. Yeah. 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 Track of this and then found that one was available, and if we don't get it now it may yeah. be a while with the delays that yeah like George we're talking about the delays are, are crazy long and and so we were lucky enough that they had one available in stock and so we have that secured which is is definitely to our benefit so that's great that's great any further all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the motion carries Next, we have consideration to approve a revised calendar for the 21-22 school year. Uh, Dr. Sanders? Uh, thank you. Uh, next school year, we have uh, some opportunities for uh, uh, professional development uh, training for our teachers. And to, in order to get the, those dates scheduled for the training, we needed to revise the calendar. Uh, the first change was uh, or is that uh, we had uh, parent-teacher conferences scheduled for uh, September 23rd and 24th, and those were going to be e-learning days. Uh, the only time we could have uh, some uh, needed training for the junior high and high school teachers is to be able to move those dates to September 7th and 8th. Uh, the training is uh, called TBRI, trust-based relational intervention uh, training that the elementary teachers have already gone through. And so uh, on September 7th and 8th, uh, those days will now be e-learning days. 
And on September 7th and 8th, the elementary teachers will be conducting parent-teacher conferences uh, since they've already had the training. And then the junior and high school uh, teachers will have the TBRI training. Uh, and then the second change is uh, making October 1st uh, an e-learning day. Uh, we uh, have uh, been working in, uh, over the last several years um, uh, with our teachers on um, uh, performance or uh, a professional learning community, sorry, uh, and that uh, we uh, are going to revisit and uh, have some retraining on that. We have new staff, um, give us some new energy in our PLCs, and uh, so we're, we're choosing to, to make e, uh, October 1st an e-learning day. And, uh, and so that the teachers can have this corporation-wide corporation training. Uh, now, on all those days, uh, we will work around uh, the uh, professional development activities uh, and the parent-teacher conferences. We will work around uh, what we need to do to make connections uh, with our students for e-learning. And uh, so all that will be scheduled uh, so that we can make sure that we provide what we need to, to provide to make the, those e-learning days quality, but yet provide our teachers some time to get this much needed training. So I recommend uh, revisions to the calendar. A motion? I'll move approval for the revisions to the 2021-22 school year calendar. I'll second that. Any questions, comments? Yeah, I have a couple. 2022 should be about 10 years from now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, one, the train, the PLC training, who's going to be, are we doing that ourselves? Or no, we, we will have a, an associate. We're working with Solution Tree, okay. uh, and they will be providing uh, a trainer for that. Uh, we haven't uh, narrowed down the specific associate who from Solution Tree will provide that training, uh, but we are we're working on that. And then uh, I presume that this was uh, discussed with the association, the teachers representatives. Uh, I think the the change of the uh, parent teacher conferences. Uh, are the elementary teachers okay with uh, going that early in the year? September 7th and 8th seems pretty early. Uh, we've had those discussions uh, with the elementary folks, okay. and they feel like it will help them to um, identify issues a little sooner okay. and, uh, and uh, be able to make a more positive difference. Okay. Anything further? Just one quick question. Just have has there been any discussion about, I think, a year and a half ago, where Wednesday mornings was reserved for teacher development time? Is that off the table for next no, year? No, we will. When school starts in, in the fall, we will have a delayed start Wednesdays uh, once again. Uh, this semester, <clears throat> this uh, actual last quarter of the school year, we've started uh, the delayed start Wednesday for elementary. Uh, but with all the changes, uh, we just felt like that was a little more difficult to pull off for uh, the high school. Uh, but when we start school in the fall, we'll be going back to that delayed start Wednesday that will, will really help us to be able to do this PLC. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we have consideration to amend the 2021 contracts for the elementary assistant principals. Dr. Sanders. Yes, so uh, as you uh, probably unfortunately remember the start of the 2020-21 uh, school year, it was uh, a, a very crazy time uh, with trying to come up with our plan for reopening school. And we laid out a plan, and, and then the, the numbers grew a little worse, and we ended up uh, having to delay the start of school by a couple of weeks. Uh, at any rate, uh, based on when we uh, some people started 
their contract year, it didn't end up uh, correctly at the end of this school year. And uh, two of those people were our uh, elementary assistant principals, Jerry Pitford and Andy Scholl. Uh, they started uh, last year on uh, July uh, 27th, which would have made uh, their last day May 26th. Well, with the last day of school being May 28th, and the last day for the teachers being June 1st, it doesn't work out so well. <laughs> uh, so uh, we've added three days uh, to their contract. So we're amending their 2020-21 contract, and we're adding three days. So it'll go from 193 days to 196 days uh, for this school year only uh, in order to adjust for uh, what happened with COVID-19 this year. Um, so just uh, ask for your approval. I right, move approval. A second. Any questions or comments? I just Good. appreciate what the administrators no, did yeah. this year. Uh, administrators, staff, teachers, everybody. It, uh, and I once again thank my lucky stars that I decided to retire when I did. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have consideration to amend the 2021 and 2122 contracts for the director of the Edgewood Early Childhood Center, Dr. Sanders. Right, so we'll be asking to make uh, an amendment to uh, Mr. Wooden's 2020 21 contract and a different change for his 2021-2022 contract. For the 2021 contract, it's a similar situation to our uh, elementary assistant principals. Uh, Mr. Wooden uh, started uh, the, the, uh, uh, his contract year on July 20th. Uh, Mr. Wooden has a 198-day contract, which would uh, make him also uh, having May 26th as his last day. And so we're asking to amend his 2021 uh, contract, uh, adding three days. Uh, so it'll go from 198 days to 201 days. And that would be just for his 2020, 2021 contract. Uh, for his 21, 22 contract, it'll go back to 198 days. Uh, for his 21, 22 contract, the change here that we would like to make is uh, related to uh, what Mr. Wooden has been doing uh, for the Edgewood Early Childhood Center. As you uh, have uh, heard from different reports, uh, Mr. Wooden has led his staff to achieve a level three, uh, past the quality level, uh, and, uh, and so he, that is really uh, going to enable us to attract more preschoolers uh, uh, provide an increase in revenue for the, the preschool. And uh, the second part of that is the uh, Edward Early Childhood Center uh, will be finished, we hope, uh, by the start of the school year. Uh, but Mr. Wooden will be moving to uh, actually running a building by himself where right now the, uh, the uh, EECC is within the primary school. And, and don't get me wrong, Mr. Wooden uh, works very hard at that, uh, but he also has two other administrators uh, right there uh, near his office to help him uh, with different issues. Well, moving over to the new EECC building, he, although it'll be connected, he will basically still be running his own building. And so I'm recommending that we increase Mr. Wooden's salary for his 2021-2022 uh, contract from 51,000 to 56,000, uh, an increase of $5,000. Um, it's just a, a great benefit to have someone of uh, Mr. Wooden's caliber working for our school corporation and I look for many more years of great things to come, and I recommend your approval. I move approval of the recommendation on the uh, director of the Early Childhood Center contract. No, I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any questions, discussion? 
uh, we'll be continuing continuing to expand our class sizes uh, as well and the responsibilities just can Let's continue to, to, to grow so <laughs> yeah. we appreciate that very much yeah. okay all those in favor say aye. aye aye opposed motion carries next we have consideration to approve at eps uh, eis walk-in freezers and coolers improvements uh, mr irwin yeah, so I provided you with the quotes that was sourced uh, by Vicki Coffey and Arnold Caldwell, but Vicki has identified some of the necessary improvements to, uh, for her walk-in freezers and coolers at the elementary schools. Um, right now, the, win the winning quote was the uh, local vendor, and that was Goldie and Sons. Um, the expected total is $29,000, and that includes the work for both schools as well as the warranty. Um, and again, the, one of the things that I, I kind of wanted to mention as well, just kind of a shout out to Vicki, is that the purchase is going to be made through the lunch fund because of her, you know, great management of that fund and everything that has to do with our lunch program for our kids. And so um, the purchase will be made through that fund. So with that, I ask for your approval. Okay. Make a motion to approve. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any questions, discussions? Um, I couldn't read the the, the handwritten quote. Um, can you kind of give me a sense of exactly what is going to be included in this? Yeah, so they're working on some condensers. Uh, it's kind of like H, HVAC work, but there's compressors and condensers and evaporators and stuff like that. A lot of the mechanical equipment that goes along with the walk-in freezers and coolers. I know that Gouley and Sons, we've worked with them for many, many years. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Many, many years. So this is, this is being paid similar fashion to what the, the bus was paid for, the food, the food truck, right? From her account? Oh, yeah. That's just yes. okay. From her people. Kudos to Miss Coffey. Then. Yeah, she does a great job, and she's always forward thinking and, and looking, looking ahead and <clears throat> sitting down and talking with me through different ideas that she has, or Dr. Sanders, and so she does a great job of of keeping track of those things and looking into the future to, to see what all she can she can do. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, next is consideration to an approve an agreement with the Monroe County Redevelopment Commission. A very exciting one, Dr. Sanders. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we are very pleased that uh, the. Uh, Monroe County uh, Redevelopment C Committee met uh, in April and uh, approved a renewal of our agreement, which will continue uh, the uh, commitment of $270,000 annually. Uh, the first agreement that uh, we've had with, with the RDC uh, has funded our uh, STEAM initiatives uh, uh, mostly our STEAM coaches, and as we mentioned to the redevelopment uh, uh, committee that we started, which we started meeting with them last August, uh, to uh, make that connection from the STEAM initiative to the Ready Schools initiative. And we wanted to, them to understand that the Ready Schools is not a separate initiative. Uh, and, and really, uh, the STEAM initiative, initiative could not have gone g better uh, because it led to an expansion of what STEAM was all about. And that's where we are with, with Ready Schools. And the RDC, they are great partners. Uh, we are required to make uh, a presentation twice a year uh, to the RDC. And they're just always so interested and always uh, demonstrating how much uh, they're in support of what we're doing to help our students uh, to learn, uh, to prepare themselves uh, for uh, tomorrow's world. And that's the biggest, big part of, uh, of Ready Schools is enabling our students that when they leave high school, they are prepared uh, to enter the workforce, that they're prepared to be contributing members of the community. And that's what we're, we're trying to develop. And the RDC uh, has uh, 
uh, agreed with us and they uh, have approved uh, another uh, six years with the RDC. We have motion. I move approval and just a little pat on the back for Mr. Kerr. He was big instrumental in that first one that came through and we really appreciated that. That's, that's, uh, that's really started a wonderful, wonderful thing for us here. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And, and, and thank you, Mr. Dernal, for, for reminding me. I did want to thank, uh, there are a lot of people that Dana definitely uh, right at the top of the list. Uh, I want to thank Brad Tucker also for his help. Um, Christine Bartlett, uh, she was a big contributor. Uh, Jamie Miller, our coordinator of Ready Schools, and our Ready Schools coaches, Megan Scott and, and John Kerr, and, uh, and uh, Matt Irwin, uh, were all, it was a team effort. Mm -hmm. I'll second the motion and the thanks. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Any further discussions, yeah. comments? Yeah. Thank you. I want to thank, thank Dane again for, for getting this initiated yeah. 10 years ago? In six. Six years ago, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then I also want to make a public thank you to uh, Ms. Cox from the HT. Her, her article after the last RDC meeting was very informative. I thought she did a nice job of covering what transpired that night at the meeting. So thank you, Ms. Cox. Is the uh, RDC um, <laughs> controls the funds from the TIF district. Um, the West Side TIF district is uh, greatly in uh, Richland uh, Township and our school corporation and um, part of the TIF funds can be used for education, uh, especially as it relates to um, the workforce. And uh, STEAM was, was, was there because of the types of jobs that are, are in uh, the TIF district. And then now even more so with the Ready Schools uh, initiative, we truly are preparing uh, students who choose to, to, to go into to those fields to be able to walk into those jobs uh, that, that are, are here uh, in, our, in our TIF district here. Um, and so, uh, again, we started that relationship six years ago um, with the first round of grants, and, and we were very, very happy uh, and, and appreciative of the RDC uh, to continue to work with us um, for another six years. We really, really do appreciate uh, them and, and, and all the commissioners uh, that, that work with us on that. So, anything further? Okay. Just, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, next, we have a revision to our NEOLA policy regarding uh, voting. Dr. Sanders. Right. Uh, this is also an action we took last, I believe it was last July, uh, on this policy as we were trying to adjust to uh, having uh, school board meetings uh, virtually. And uh, we, uh, through the efforts of uh, Ferguson Law, we were able to uh, revise our, our uh, policy 0167.1 to adapt to those changes. Well, uh, the, this past legislative session, uh, the uh, legislators approved uh, House Bill 1437, uh, which uh, uh, made some additional revisions. And what this policy uh, revision will, will end up helping us is uh, it'll make us uh, in line with the changes that the uh, legislators made this past session. Uh, this is on first reading. Uh, so we'll bring it back to you in June for approval. And Christine's here if you have any questions for Christine. In the board packet, you received the red line version, which shows the, the different changes. This will continue to let us attend by Zoom if we need to or, or out of town or something, correct? Right. Yeah, okay. But there has to be... A, a quorum physically present. Yeah, but, there, order, there, but, a little bit more a to it than what we had mm -hmm. last year. Like you two in a row, maybe something like that. And yeah. Have to come back. yeah. Christina, is there anything you wanted to add? <clears throat> um, you already hit on some of the requirements that are in the new statute, but it's some minutes requirements that we have to make sure in there. 
um, some voting requirements, at least 50%, or in your case, three board members must be present in person. Um, there's a requirement that the board members cannot attend more than 50% of the meetings per year electronically and no more than two consecutively. And there are exceptions that you'll see in the policy if somebody's ill. Those are um, exceptions to those restrictions. And, but, this and then also, go ahead. I'm sorry, go. Uh, there's also content if, if budget or right. certain yeah. things are, are right. I saw a reduction in force, other things that you have to be here to, to do those. And I, I, That's I correct. Agree with the, I think it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was good legislation. Mm -hmm. And this is universal statewide. It is. Actually, prior to this, state entities were allowed to do this. This is just catching you guys up to what the state entities could already do. Okay. You have to have a policy in place to be able to do it. So we've got to uh, make sure that our policy aligns with what the new statute permits. Okay. okay. Uh, I like it. It's good. We will uh, bring that back next month for vote. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, now we have miscellaneous information, Dr. Sanders. Uh, I don't have anything for miscellaneous, so we'll, we can move on. All right, jump right into the superintendent's report then. <laughs> Very good. Uh, just want to start off because it does relate uh, to what uh, I'm going to talk about tonight. But uh, with, as we uh, have seen in the news recently with some of the changes in, in our county uh, with uh, facial coverings and masks, uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about how that impacts uh, school. And uh, we, uh, as a school corporation, like every other school, public school in Indiana, we are still operating uh, out of the Governor Holcomb's executive order. And uh, so for the rest of this school year, uh, facial, facial coverings will still be required uh, in our K-12 uh, facilities and also uh, other safety measures such as social distancing uh, will remain. Uh, and I, I bring that up because uh, I want to talk a little bit tonight about, uh, to me it's very exciting and, and uh, be, able to be able to talk about our 2021 uh, commencement ceremony for Edgewood High School, which will be June 5th. Uh, at 11 o'clock and it will be in person. If you remember last year, we uh, uh, live streamed the, the, the presentation and, uh, and we were able to uh, allow our students to walk across the stage, uh, but this year they will be able to do that in person in front of other parents. Uh, each student will be allowed uh, five guests and uh, we really tried to maximize the, that number, but yet stay safe uh, with, uh, because we're still uh, operating uh, under the pandemic. Uh, facial coverings will be required. Uh, our graduates will be wearing masks, but when they get up and cross the stage, they will be able to take their masks off. Uh, the bleachers will be marked uh, to indicate uh, appropriate social distancing for our different families. Uh, our plan uh, for commencement was submitted uh, a couple of times to the Monroe County Health Department and we worked with them to come up with what we're going to do for our commencement ceremony on June 5th. So we're very excited about that and uh, you know this has been a very challenging year uh, for all of us. Uh, so. Uh, I'm very excited to share with you tonight uh, the different uh, end of the year celebrations that will uh, happen at each of the schools, uh, the different awards programs, and when those dates will, will uh, those events will take place on the dates and times. And then uh, this Wednesday night, uh, the uh, Seniors Honor Night will be uh, here at Edgewood High School. Our last day of school is uh, Friday, May 28th. We're almost there. Boy, it, uh, so, so many times this year felt like it was dragging on in so many ways, yeah. and in so many other ways, it right. just seemed like it flew by. Yeah. Uh, just interesting how it could feel like both ways sometimes. I, I wanted to mention one more thing. Um, 
Hannah Lane, who spoke tonight, uh, I've reached out to her and emailed her and invited Hannah to meet with myself, Mr. Ackerman, uh, the, Mr. Hammett, uh, Mr. Irwin, uh, so we can uh, just kind of dive a little deeper into what she's looking at and uh, in order to make some improvements at the softball field. Uh, I wish she was still here. I kind of wish I would have said this earlier, but uh, it's... Uh, it's very impressive that uh, a yeah, student would get up and, and on her own come and, and make a presentation to the board. It was Hannah Laney? What's her last name? Lane. 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 Okay. Right. I didn't catch it, but okay. All right. Um, now we have RBBEA comments, uh, Mr. Ewells. Good evening, everyone. Um, a lot of comments, I guess, but never going to be too long. Dr. Sanders, thanks for clarifying publicly the mask requirements for the last nine days. I've had freshmen ask me all day about that, of course, but <laughs> they would. They're anxious, too, as well. Um, as you said, yeah, right now it feels like it is dragging on. There's no doubt about it, but we're getting there. The magic number on my board today was nine, so we are, we are about there. And I've told some of my non-teacher friends that, you know, all in all, I feel like we've, uh, we've done pretty well looking back. Uh, we've gotten through, weathered the storm and, and getting these kids through and across the finish line. Uh, Mr. Tucker, I think you mentioned Emily Cox. Just a quick shout out. I know Stacia Myers was more than thrilled with the article in the paper the other day. She was talking to me about in the lunchroom. She sounded like, a, like just a giddy little person. She said, oh, yeah, it was, it was a great time, this and that. And I had missed the paper. Sometimes I do, but it's hanging up in my room right now. So thank you, by the way. Quick shout out. Uh, just a couple of personnel items just to echo what uh, Mr. DeMoss and Dr. Sanders said about Jerry Bland. Um, I would describe him as a straight shooter. I've always appreciated his straightforwardness and just uh, just always to the point. And you, you knew what you were going to get from him. So I wish the best of luck for him as well, big shoes to fill. And also, um, normal stuff for you, but uh, on the new hires, we have a couple new math teachers because we're losing a couple young ones in my math department. Uh, you know, they're moving on to different things and that's good for them. Uh, but it didn't go unnoticed to me that uh, you replaced them both because for years, this is now year 27 for me, believe <laughs> it or not, and uh, we've always had six math teachers and it's held just fine, but for the last several years, and I know Mr. Ackerman can attest to this, we've, we've had a need for a seventh one. And we finally got one this year, a young lady's doing well, and it's, it's made the difference. You know, I know you guys don't see it day to day, but I'm just here to tell you that having that extra teacher has made a difference. Because uh, if there's one thing other than home environment and parents, you know, that's the biggest impact for our kids and what they can do. But once they get to school, in my mind, class size is a big difference maker. And uh, I felt that this year, even just having that seventh teacher in some of our classes, you know, some are bigger than others, but it makes a difference. So appreciate just the, uh, even if it's a simple token of getting both those replaced so we can keep our numbers down. And I'm sure I, I can speak on behalf of English replacing our retiring teacher, Beth Perney, as well. Because uh, we, simply put, we can get to the kids we can get to more of the kids when there's less of them in our class. So appreciate replacing both of those. Even if it really wasn't a thought for you, it was for me. So I was always a little bit paranoid that we were gonna pinch back down to six and uh, <laughs> glad we did not. So thank you very much. And as I said, the magic number today is nine. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Ewan. Okay, well, I will have a board member comments. So I'll start with Mr. DeMoss. Well, I ended last meeting with uh, asking the community to encourage the General Assembly to step up to the plate, and they did. And so I think I have to give them credit for having done that. Um, I do want to make sure everybody understands it's a, a, it's a step. Um, it, according to one of the analyses that I saw, uh, it gets us back to where we were in 2013, and, uh, and there's about uh, another decade of, of of uh, erosion that still needs to be fixed, so they're not done. But it's it's a good first step, and so I, I do appreciate that. Um, 
thanks to the donations, especially all the donations from Tri Kappa. What a great, great group. They, they've been supporting the uh, school system as long as I've been around, and uh, and they really did great things this 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 year. Um, it was such an exciting month for me. Um, I got to participate in the color run at the uh, intermediate school, <laughs> and I got to tell you. I could not keep up with Jennifer Lee for for very long. That woman has so much energy. But I got to squirt about several hundred children with orange uh, cornstarch, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and they seemed to be getting, having a great time. And, and at one point, uh, Miss Lee said uh, um, that um, uh, it, it, one of the things she has missed is just hearing the the excitement and the the screams and the and the the fun and uh, that day she heard it and so that was terrific. Um, let's see. I uh, also I got to um, uh, I've got a shout out to the girls track team for Win WIC softball team has had a terrific year. Um, I had the honor of announcing Bob Jones' 500th career victory for the Mustangs, and it was a walk-off. It was it couldn't be any better. And uh, then just today, I found out that uh, Luke Hayden was named uh, District One Player of the Year in baseball for Indiana, and so uh, well deserved. And what a talent! And uh, it's we come to the end of another another strange year, second strange year in a row here, but. Uh, it is, I, I look forward to things moving back to normal, um, closer to normal, including graduation. Uh, and I know that Mr. Ewells will not be able to attend our graduation this year because his son is going to be receiving his diploma at another high school here in Monroe County. But uh, uh, congratulations to Ethan and to his dad, who I think just recently had a birthday, but we won't go there. So that's all. all right. <laughs> Mr. Tucker. Uh, again, uh, ditto what Mr. DeMoth said. I, I, I texted a friend of mine after I uh, saw Mr. Jones's mm -hmm. 500th win, and uh, this particular guy had 500 wins from baseball too. And in the end, he said, "Rare error," and that's mm -hmm. definitely it was rare error. That's that's pretty impressive. The the length of time and, and the amount of number of kids he's impacted over the years. So, uh, kudos, to Coach Jones and the and the baseball team. Um, I want to also just. Just reflecting back when Mr. Yost was talking about upcoming graduation and Dr. Sanders a year ago, sitting about three rows behind Mr. Irwin, and there's like three people in the audience. We had to take turns as board members sitting out there 700 feet apart. I don't even know what the rules were at the time. But it just was so sad watching the kids walk up to an empty table Somebody would lay something there, step back, get their diploma, and then walk off, and then everybody had to get squirted out sanitizer or whatever at that time. And I'm excited about graduation. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks to the high school folks for putting it all together this year. And I know all these celebrations at the elementary, junior high is going to be exciting for the kids. And uh, we're getting closer to, to getting back to somewhat normalcy. So so thank you to, to all. And I uh, did want to do a special uh, shout out to Mr. Irwin. He put up with me for at least an hour and a half today, asking me questions about tonight's board meeting. And uh, thank you. And I know Mr. Dernal definitely appreciates it. So we don't have to be here all night listening to my questions. So. One quick question. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Mr. Dernal. Well, I, again, I uh, uh, just like you all said, ditto to all what you said. Uh, it, uh, it warmed my heart Thursday, Friday, and today to watch. Uh, Alec drive out of town in his new police Durango with the, with the school bus kids going to, to Bradford Woods. I just felt so good that we had a police officer there. You know, with the way things are going nowadays, we just, we just never know. I also want to thank uh, uh, the, the, the leadership we have in this system. This, this school year, uh, this is my 22nd year, I guess, on the board, 21st year on the board, and I have never seen an upside down school year like this, Jerry, and you've carried us through just like a great pilot. I said, you've, you've done a great job. You're, all your principals and assistant principals have been right there with you, and uh, you know it's just very uh, heartwarming to know that we have that type of people here with us. And you know we hate to lose uh, uh, Mr. Bland, but uh, I think he'll have a good challenge over there at, at Owen County. Wish him well. But again, thank you so much 
for all you do for us. I really that's, appreciate it. That's definitely a team effort. Um, I was so excited to see Hannah Lane uh, come to the board meeting and uh, express her concerns and uh, her uh, vision uh, for for uh, improved facilities for the softball. Um, just shows the, the quality of the students we have here, that they care about the school, they care about what it looks like, they care about uh, what goes on, and they're willing to, mm -hmm. to, to come. And, you know, I can't imagine and coming and speak, <laughs> speaking on an issue that was uh, uh, during, during high school. So I, I really appreciate her coming. Uh, I thought that was great uh, to see her here. Um, we uh, echo what everybody said. I mean, it's just uh, uh, a, a good meeting tonight, good people, um, a great, great school corporation um, in, in, in all aspects. Um, one thing that I failed to do very much, but I really want to thank Katz and, and our, our sound and lighting people, um, uh, Keith and Rick. Um, we appreciate um, so much has gone on this year with um, resolutions and, and, and so many things that we've been doing and Christine Bartlett has, has has been there with us helping us make sure that we do it all correctly every step of the way and so I uh, just wanted to give her a shout out as well um, and but most of, importantly I uh, really want to uh, wish the graduates uh, well and uh, hope that they're they're you know, the last two years have been crazy for them, but uh, I hope that their futures um, are, are bright and, and prosperous, and we uh, really appreciate uh, them and all, and all the work that all of the school corporation people, all the teachers, all the administrators, all the all the staff, everyone makes a difference in those uh, children's lives. They wouldn't be crossing that stage without each and every one of you, so we, we appreciate you so much. Um, with that, this meeting is adjourned, and we'll have board signatures. Thank you.